On this edition of Check 6 Aviation, we're continuing with the horizontal stabilizer. Get ready for part two, coming up. Welcome back to Check 6 Aviation, my friends. Um, if you notice a little something different about the voice, so it's not what it normally is, yeah, I got sick a little bit ago, a little while ago and just powered through it. Uh, but in the process of coughing out a lung or two and trying to put it back in, my larynx decided that it was going to go on vacation. It said, screw it, I'm out of here. I'm going to Florida. Uh, but uh, I'm feeling much better now, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making this video. I'd still be in bed recuperating. Uh, but uh, we have made some progress on the RV-10 here at Check 6 Aviation. And this is what we're doing here. Yeah, this, this video is all gonna be about priming the interior skins and some of the, uh, some of the, uh, the parts that for, are going to be going on the, the forward spar. Uh, I don't have the rear spar yet. I am planning on taking a trip next week. Uh, March 9th is when I leave to go to travel up to the Portland, Oregon area and visit Vans and actually pick up my spar, my rear spar. Why? Well, let's see, $850 worth of in shipping to have it sent to me. Um, I could drive there and back for about $550 to $600. Yeah, um, I might spend a little bit more than the $850 in hotel rooms and food because I'm bringing the family, but I feel that you really can't put a price on memories made with your family. So we're not just going to vans just to pick up the part and we're leaving. No, I'm just, I'm making a vacation out of it during spring break for my girls while they're not in school. Uh, so I'm planning on visiting the Evergreen Air and Space Museum, which my daughter Madeline is super excited about. I uh, haven't talked to Serena about it yet. Uh, I, I want to visit Multnomah Falls. Uh, beautiful, beautiful scenery going through the Columbia River Gorge. That's, a num that's another thing. And um, because I've been through there. I've been to Portland, Oregon several times in the truck. But my family has never been to the Pacific Northwest. So that's another reason we're going. So. I don't know. Re reach out if you like, but uh, I'll be gone from March 5th, March 9th to the 16th ish or so, roughly. Uh, I'm traveling through Lubbock, Texas, uh, Santa Rosa, New Mexico, Albuquerque, um, Moab, Utah, uh, Price, Utah. Spending the night there. Uh, Salt Lake City, Boise, Idaho, all the way through up uh, I-84, yeah, I-84. So if you've got something that you need picked up from Vans, uh, reach out, I mean, I, I, it's up to you. I've, I've reached out to Vans, uh, Greg from Vans is like, hey, it sounds complicated, we're not really into you know complications right now in case it doesn't ship. I, I get that, but you know, uh, it's up to you. I'm willing to do it, but you know, you're, you're the one taking on the risk. Uh, anyway, so let's get back to it. Let's get to the video. So as I said in the previous video, I'm continuing on without my yeah for, my rear my forward spar or my rear spar HS1003. So I decided to uh, at, the, at least can get as far as I could without it. So here I am, I'm, I'm drilling out the spar caps. The spar caps were already made in the previous video. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. it you, the link is up in the top right corner of this video. Uh, I'm you know, countersinking the middle holes for the, uh, you know, right here in the, in the uh, forward spar, uh, as instructed in the plans, and I'm also countersinking the middle holes that are not going to be covered up by the skins because they do come in at an angle. Uh, the skins do at least. And uh, there's a portion of, yeah, where 
yeah of the yeah the assembly where it's it's just there it's bare you can actually see it um, I decided here though that I had an extra HS1002 because I was using the one that I purchased uh, from Vans back yeah, dur yeah, around the time of Oshkosh and uh, I'm like you know what let me try using my original at least everything else will be original on the airplane well that was a great idea until I had an oops I you know got to the point where I was kind of sinking the middle yeah the middle flanges and I dug too deep on the countersink so that ended up being scrapped uh, here I'm deburring everything there's a lot of deburring in building an airplane uh, especially now that I have a friend that um, is a professional airplane mechanic for Envoy and has given me some tips here uh, I'm, I believe I am yes I'm, I'm definitely drilling out the, the attachment holes for the attachment brackets that I that the plans call for making and yeah uh, there, there's a lot of there's like six holes that you have to uh, eight maybe that you have to drill uh, checking the plans once again making sure that everything is going well and uh, doing everything right and back to deburring Especially here, because, yeah, what you just saw was me, you know, especially since I had drilled holes in the attachment brackets, I wanted to make sure that there was not going to be anything that would keep, you know, any burrs that would keep it from sitting flush, especially when it came time to rivet those onto the forward spar. Now, I had already thought that I had this already deburred that, that because I wasn't feeling any burrs. But once I got some tips and pointers from my friend Matt, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is not, it, it, there should be no squares. It sh uh, all of the, the, the edges should be rounded. And what that does, it, it helps avoid any future cracks from developing. So, yeah. A few text messages. Because, well, I'm one of those people that tends to, that tends to live their life on social media. Plus, I also do a little dabble trading in the Forex currency markets, too. So, I have a service that provides uh, signals that... Uh, that pop up from time to time and so when those signals do pop up well yeah I just gotta place a few trades Now what you see I'm working with here is the rear spar doubler, or the, the main spar doubler, I should say. And after all of this is primed, that's when I will do, you know, complete my assembly process. Which could be I could I could start I could possibly start assembling some of this in the next video I could see my way clear to doing uh, at least attaching the attachment brackets and the doubler uh, after 
the the forward spar is primed in the next video quick check of the plans because sometimes for, especially from uh, I've heard from other builders it is helpful to read ahead to kind of get an idea of what you're doing for example the plans say to uh, machine countersink the the center 11 holes on each side of the forward spar and then it later says to machine countersink the rest of the holes um, now I will say this though and I'll sh and I'm going to share this in the next video as well it, I have a little piece of skin from a uh, from scrap metal that has been dimpled and I use that as kind of a, a depth gauge of you know where the skins are going to go so um, that plus the plan I've got older plans for my uh, for my empennage kit the empennage kit itself set is final sized holes so there's no having to final drill but yet the plans still call for final drilling you know pre-assembly final drill every, you know, everything and then uh, taken apart so now here this is where it gets real interesting um, because I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm, get, I'm using a, a, salute, a chemical called pre-coat. And what that is, is that that's a cleaner. It's a deep cleaner. And I'm scuffing up everything to give the, uh, the primer a surface to adhere to. And you, re, you have to do this with everything that you're going to prime. And I just I want to make sure that I've got a good scuff uh, you see the, the the print from you know the aluminum manufacturer that that's got to come off too and that is what the pre coat does it gets real it's really good at getting everything off and with a good scuff you're you're going to have a really good surface now what you do is you you just wash rinse it off and let the let the aluminum dry after that so what i've done is yeah just go ahead and do that just give the the table a quick squeegee uh, let it dry a little bit make sure that the surface is cleaned uh with a, a a rag now the primer has been sitting for a while so i've got to go ahead and mix it up at least the, the primer portion you know the 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 base of the primer and it's a one-to-one -one solution so if you're going to make eight ounces you put four ounces each of the primer base and the primer activator so i I'm, i know that i'm going to have a i'm going to need a, a decent amount because I'm, I'm, I'm working with large parts um at least at least here i am one eternity later now after you mix up the primer the amount of primer that you want you have to let it sit for 30 minutes that's why the sun's gone down and i'm kind of working by the light of my shop sitting for the 30 minutes gives it time to kind of you know cure uh, bubble up a bit and uh, mix a little bit on its own I, it's a chemical process that i don't quite understand but it works making sure that i get a really good coat on everything and i still got a little bit of primer in the gun so i decided that hey i can at least get one of the spar caps done so um yeah you saw me yeah pre-coat I'm, you know, I've rinsed it off, I'm drying it off, pushing it off to the side, uh, pushing off the skin, that is. And here we go, shot with primer. Next day after church, I believe this was a Sunday. So peeling off the vinyl and pre-coating the other skin. 
because there's two sides. The, the skins come in two, in uh, two side, you know, you know, left and right, on the horizontal stabilizer. Same process, only this time I'm also adding in prime, yeah, pre-coating and primering the, yeah, spar doubler, as well as the other, uh, the other, um, yeah, what do you call it? Uh, spar cap, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. And since I used the primer base the previous day, no need to mix. And maybe, maybe I needed a little bit of a mix. But there's the spar cap. Pre-coat, taking it over to the hose to go ahead and rinse it off. Getting the smaller items done and out of the way first. And I gotta say that I'm, I'm super happy with the way that this table is performing. Um, it's nothing more than just an old crate from Vans. I don't have to worry about getting it all goobered up with primer or whatever. It's just basically a throwaway table. And some may say that, don't, you know, may ask, don't you have to worry about bugs? Uh, actually, this time of year, you know, early March, you know, late late February, early March, there's really not a whole lot of bug activity, thankfully. I did have a couple of, you know, things that, you know, kind of got in there, but I was able to get, get them off. It looked like, um, like dust or something like that. Now here, this is, this is me being, you know, trying to be a perfectionist again. Uh, I went ahead and said, you know what, I, I need to touch up the lightning holes on the spar. Thankfully, the spar is currently done and I'm ready to prime, but that will be shown in the next video, along with the yeah, preparing the ribs for assembly. And you'll notice that I got a new tool. I got an angle grinder instead of the the die grinder that I was using before and uh, let me tell you it makes the job so much easier now I am using different grit discs for this as well and so that's why I'm, I'm going over several times I'm changing I'm starting off with the the more the coarser grit going finer each time there's uh, different three different di uh, d grit discs that I'm working with here just to get that that polished look I mean in the end you're not going to see the polished look anyway but you know workmanship counts And the whole idea is to get as rounded of a surface as possible because, like I said before, I don't want this to crack at all if I can help it. By the way, guys, if you are if you have an Instagram account, be sure to follow us over there. We post a lot of content before we post a video on YouTube. And some of the content is actually not going to even make it onto YouTube. Thank you for watching. If you've made it this far to the end of the video, then you know please consider giving us a thumbs up. 
it helps the YouTube algorithm decide who to share this, you know, how wide to share this video out to. Uh, and by all means, hit that subscribe button down below and set that notification bell to set to all. Because in the next video, we're going to be tackling the installation and preparation of the ribs and moving forward with this build. One bite at a time, that's how you eat an elephant, and this is definitely a big elephant to eat. With that, always check your six. Peace, love, and blue skies.